So ladies and gentlemen, let us discuss today about one of the most frequently asked questions to me and to so many other astrologers in YouTube, outside YouTube, in all the forums. The million dollar question, can remedies change our karma? Yes or no? Well, the answer is yes and no both. <laughs> Alright, so I'll try to make things much more simpler and not more complex than it is already. Because yes, remedies can mediate to a great extent, but where does it mediate? Does it reduce the karma which comes to us? When I say karma, I mean negative karma here. Or how does it act? I mean the karma doesn't come or does it come and we feel less or how is it? Alright, so... We will try to answer these questions, hopefully in short today. And yes, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up at the end. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your chart or any remedies in any particular area, then you could go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me personally. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him even if the remedies work or they don't. <laughs> okay, so when we are talking of remedies here, I will proceed ahead with the intrinsic assumption that we are doing bona fide remedies. Okay, because honestly speaking, 90% of the problem is because we are not doing authorized bona fide remedies. We are doing remedies because somebody told us, right? Somebody told us that you have to go to Banaras and you have to face the southwest direction and you have to throw something in a particular angle at a particular time in a particular hora and you believed it. <laughs> All right. So now I'm not uh, criticizing those who do this, but I'm saying these kind of funny remedies also exist i mean can you just believe it now imagine you are ganesh or you are lakshmi or you are shiva or vishnu J just imagine just think you know if a person goes and you know suppose somebody has relationship issues and somebody goes in venus hora to any place and you know he or she throws something do you seriously feel that i mean that can be a remedy well so therefore, we have to make sure that whenever we are doing bon remedies, they are bona fide, they are certified by the scriptures, they are authorized and only then we can claim to ask this question, okay, that remedies will work or they will not. Because if we are not doing the right remedies, then this question does not arise at all, okay, because then there is no question of remedies working or not, it will never work. So the point which I'm trying to tell here is that whenever you are doing some remedies, you need to cross check, double check 10 times before you do all. Okay. Only then we can step ahead of this. All right. So now step one is cleared. Assuming that we are doing bona fide authorized remedies. Now the question is, when can remedies change our karma? See, when we are talking of changing karma, it's it's not like some uh, like for example somebody goes to a uh, goes outside and then he slips by mistake and then he falls into the drain okay and then he gets up and then he goes and takes a bath and then he's like oh now I'm the one before right it's not like that which means positive and negative karma do not cancel out each other okay so for example if i slap somebody and if i go and give a flower to somebody to a small child <laughs> it does not mean that the karma is cancelled okay it means there are two separate accounts which means one karma is i have done a bad karma slapping somebody and then i have done a good karma giving a rose to somebody all right so now both the karmic accounts will have a say in my future one day one small boy will come and give me a rose and one day somebody else will come and slap me all right so that's the first thing which we need to understand 
good and bad karma do not nullify each other okay that is why many people say that oh we did this you know now can we do something good and you know can we cancel it or no no it doesn't work like that yes price chit is different so for example they say that if there is a problem in a particular area of your life if finances then sun okay then you should fast on sundays if relationships then it's friday okay if children then it's thursday if you have problem with your home or with your emotions or you don't feel happy in life then it's monday if you do not have motivation determination in life to go ahead then it's tuesday okay and if you have problems with people in general then it's wednesday all right or if you are lazy then saturday <laughs> all seven days covered so did i cover hopefully <laughs> okay so now suppose we do fasting on these days that's kind of a remedy now what happens in fasting is we are voluntarily accepting some pain all right so when we are fasting uh, the body is feeling that pain that you know oh i don't have food today so we are voluntarily accepting a part of that negative karma so that is that is one way but it does not mean that it will cancel out the bad karmas it is not like that okay so now the thing is when you say karma now we know there are two separate accounts okay so karma means there are different kinds of karma actually there is uh, kriya mana karma which the person is doing from his birth all right from the moment he or she is born what that person is doing till now that's kriya mana karma and then there is you know the karma with which we are born in this life okay and then there is the karma of all of our lifetimes you know so the thing is the karma that we have in this life in this life prarabdha karma that cannot be changed which means because the prarabdha karma is there with this body which means the moment we are born the prarabdha is i mean the prarabdha is not in the body the body itself is the prarabdha you understand which means it is not that something is sticking to our body the body is a manifestation of the prarabdha which we have okay so that cannot be changed which means the amount of suffering and amount of happiness is predestined we cannot force suffering onto us or we cannot force happiness even if we do sometimes that will be artificial okay uh the amount will not change but externally we may be able to change okay so in shrimad bhagavatam we have the example of chitraketu maharaj that he didn't have a son and he wanted a son but it was not there in his karma then uh narad muni and all the other sages angira muni they blessed him with the son he said that your son's name will be harsha shoka harsha means one who makes you happy shoka means one who makes you miserable okay so the thing is um, even lord vishnu had also blessed him profusely so he got a son but the problem is uh, later on he had so much suffering you know when the son died at a very young age and later on chitraketu became a great devotee of course of lord vishnu now that's a separate story but the point here is the prarabdha is the body itself okay so that cannot be changed that is destined the moment we are born okay and that's what the horoscope is but now the question is then why is there a provision of remedies in the vedic scriptures okay why remedies are of various kinds some remedies are for example giving donations Don giving donations is like fasting so you have your hard earned money your wealth or your time anything and then a part of that you give even if you don't like okay un until it pinches you so that means the suffering which you were supposed to get by somebody robbing away your money now that voluntarily you are accepting by donating it to somebody okay so that's one kind of a remedy so that is where fasting or donation these kind of remedies come okay now the question is about mantras because when i do consultations the most important thing i do is i suggest mantras because that is the most important thing somebody should do so now the question is what does mantras do okay what what happens when we start chanting a mantra does it mean that the prarabdha karma changes so many times i 
get this question that okay i am not getting married can you give me a mantra to get married all right so the answer is first marriage has to be indicated in your horoscope in the dasha if that is not indicated you will not get married now for example there are some people who say that oh i want money in this domain or in that domain or money in general okay yes and now some people will ask me this question that i had made a video on um, money remedy of you know the six sweets six weeks that's the most one of the most viewed uh, famous videos of my channel well even if you do that remedy the amount of money that you will get will be on the basis of your karma okay so that means if somebody does the remedy it does not mean that he or she will become bill gates okay of course i am not saying that uh, it's great to become bill gates or it's bad to be not bill gates i am not saying that what i am saying is if bill gates does this remedy <laughs> then maybe he he will earn in you know i don't know how much but if some normal people they do this remedy they, they may not earn in millions or billions okay they will earn depending on what the horoscope is indicating so no remedy can take you beyond your karma that's not possible okay the question is now what does mantras do well mantras they will change you from inside okay so this means that externally suppose you have something or you don't when you are chanting the right mantras then you will you will realize inside gradually that will not happen in one day of course you will gradually realize that yes this is what is inside of me which i am trying to fulfill through something or through somebody else okay which i do not need and that is where mantras come into picture okay so which means suppose you are chanting a mantra for getting you know good health so what it does is it will not make your disease disappear it will not do that it cannot do that it it doesn't do that at least i have not seen in my practical experience but what it will do is it will give you the good intelligence provided you are chanting the right mantra in in the right uh, time time means i don't mean some muhurat but some mantras has to be chanted in the day some after sunset okay if you are following the procedures properly then you will realize that now you your intelligence is sharp enough to make the right decisions regarding your health which means you will eat the right foods you will drink the right things you will abstain from the wrong things yes you will meet the right people who will discuss about eating good food these kind of things will happen you will join a, a spiritual community or a community where people are health conscious in general okay so that is how the mantra will work it is not that suppose you are destined to have a bad stomach all right it, it doesn't mean that that stomach will suddenly you know pop up and it will become very nice it doesn't mean that all right but what mantras do is they will change you from within so for example somebody has a very difficult karma in relationships yes married life or love affair romance always getting breakups always fighting quarreling and things ending in a disaster now that is an indication of uh, a difficult or a challenging venus or seventh house okay so now when somebody does remedies what happens is it does not mean that next time when you meet somebody that person suppose you're a man it doesn't mean that next time when you meet somebody that girl will be like an angel it does not mean that it simply means that you will change inside within you will know what are the mistakes that you were committing because of which these other partners did not stay with you all right yes everybody commits some blunder in relationships it is never uh, one sided you see so the point here is we will get the knowledge of where we are committing blunders where we are committing mistakes okay so in that case you can say that remedies are working because next time when suppose you have had many breakups like people tell me sometimes you know they have had 
17 breakups, 18, 23 breakups. Yes, there are people like this who have, you know, in double digit, you know, so many relationships. So now suppose you have had, you know, five breakups. So now it does not mean that you will not have the sixth breakup. If that is there in your karma, that will happen. But the point here is you will be better equipped to deal with the next person, the new person when you chant the mantras. Okay. You will know where you should be sensitive, where you should speak what, when you should speak what, when you should not speak what. Yes. So that you will know. So by that you can say that you can make the best use of a bad bargain. Should I repeat? Best use of a bad bargain. Which means suppose you have a very difficult karma regarding relationships. Okay. Whenever, wherever, how much ever you try things don't work. Suppose that's your situation. Then when you are chanting the mantras, then now you are very cautious that, okay, this time I should not screw things up. If he or she is screwing it, then that's beyond my control. But I should not be the one who is the cause of breaking the relationship. Okay. So similarly, career finances, whatever, whatever is there in our karma, when we do certain remedies, then what will happen is we will realize that we ourselves are lazy most of the times that is why we are not progressing ahead in the career or we are not serious yes many people they message me they tell me that oh i don't have focus in career you know i am just watching facebook or indulging in whatsapp or <laughs> doing what not other things flirting with members of the opposite sex in the office yes that's what you go uh, office for right flirting with members of the opposite sex there are many people i know who do that so the thing is if that is your situation and then later on you think that oh i will send some mantra and suddenly the boss will come and say beta tathastu no it will not happen like this okay you have to work hard and only then there will be some progress in your career if it is stagnant okay now when you do the mantras you will realize that you are doing some blunders okay that maybe you are not talking properly with people or you are not putting the hard work that is necessary whatever it is that you will realize so next time you will be better equipped that okay this time i should not do any mistake so in that sense you can say that whatever difficulty is there you are better equipped to deal with it that is where you can say remedies change karma but it does not change the externals okay that is not possible because the moment you are born the prarabdha is the body itself all right so when somebody says i have changed my prarabdha karma it essentially means that that person is saying that i have dissolved my body okay now there is one exception only one exception the exception is when somebody takes initiation diksha under a bona fide guru in a bona fide sampradaya okay in that case the guru he burns of the sins of all the other lifetimes okay the sanchit karma which is the total karma of all your lifetimes Prarabdha is what you are destined to face in this life. That cannot be changed because you have the body always. But the Sanchit Karma, that is under the control of the Guru. Because when you are taking Diksha, you are giving a commitment to your Guru Maharaj that, My dear Guru Maharaj, I so and so promise to follow these spiritual principles daily without fail till the last moment of my life and death. And then that guru requests god lord vishnu that oh my dear lord this person has done so many wrong activities please forgive him or her because now that person has given a promise to me okay so now i promise you that he will follow and that is why i have given him diksha him or her and then in that initiation ceremony the fruit is burnt into the fire you know it can be a banana traditionally in india you know that banana contains all the sins they say like this of our past lives and when we continue doing spiritual practices then we will elevate ourselves so much that even if somebody is you know like in bhagavatam we have story of the avanti brahmin you know or rishabh dev when he was just going nowhere <laughs> yes so then what happened you know people used to 
if you read the story of rishab dev you know you know people used to come and spit in his face people would come and pass stool and urine in his face can you believe it somebody doing that yes no you can't believe it you can't imagine because you have not seen somebody doing like that to anybody right so even then he was not affected because he was a great soul of course yes rishab dev and he says to bharat maharaj tapo divyam putra kayena satvam which is there in the fifth canto of shrimad bhagavatam okay so and when we read the scriptures and do mantras and visit holy places stay with great spiritually elevated personalities our necessities will go down that is the biggest blessing of spiritual life our necessities will be like zoop down so then you will know that okay if i am earning a billion dollars it's fine okay 1 million is also fine 1 rupee not bad so which means that you don't have to shorten your income or you don't have to take some job which pays you less or you don't have to cut your business i am not saying that I, what i am saying is when you are elevated spiritually then even if there are ups and downs in your profession or in your business that will not affect you that much because you know that anyways for me to sustain i need this much and extra whatever is coming let it come i will either save it for my future or i will donate it okay and some part of it i will keep for my uh, livelihood that's what you will do but suppose your lifestyle is like every day you want to eat in a hotel five star hotel yes then you have to work 36 hours in a day you have to slog and rag and rag and rag <laughs> as in hindi they say na gadhe jaisa kaam karta hai yes working like donkeys maybe even donkeys don't don't work that much okay so no offense to donkeys but the point here is when our lifestyle is so terrible that we have a vacuum inside and to fill it we use artificial substances okay like posting photos in instagram for example yes getting likes from people yes because that feels very good right so then you will take nice selfies you will buy a iphone you will do this you will do that yes you will go to exotic locations not to enjoy the location just to take selfies yes killing animals eating meat yes for the pleasure of the tongue animals are dying what's the big deal you know but we must get pleasure humko maza aana chahiye baaki duniya jaye bahar mein <laughs> my tongue should enjoy let the world go to hell animals are getting killed so what let them kill if nobody kills i will go and kill them yes i know people who tell like this there was a person who told me that if animal slaughter slo- uh, stops i will take uh, in hindi they say na kasai <laughs> i will take the blade and i will start chopping head of all the animals whoever is there you know because they are my flesh i have the right to enjoy them all right of course then law of karma will also show what karma is right to you so long story cut short the point is remedies change us from inside and make us better equipped to deal with difficult situations and therefore it is said make the best use of a bad bargain because lord krishna says in the gita दुखालयम अशाश्वत नापनुवती महात्मा संसिधि परमाम गता विच मीन्स दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड इज अ प्लेस ऑफ मिजरी ना मेनी पीपल डोंट लाइक टू हियर दिस बट दैट्स द फैक्ट ऑफ लाइफ लाइफ इज फुल ऑफ चैलेंजेस फुल ऑफ मिजरी पेन सफरिंग सॉरो येस एंड दैट्स वॉट लाइफ इज हार्डली देर इज सम प्लेजर यू नो सम टिंज ऑफ हैप्पीनेस फॉर गेट हैप्पीनेस दिस सम टिंज ऑफ प्लेजर इन फैक्ट येस any kind of pleasure you take you like to eat gulab jamuns how many gulab jamuns you can eat 20 30 40 after 40 you can't eat you will die if you eat okay so the thing is that's how this material world is unfortunately and that is why it is not a fit place for a gentleman that is why one should elevate one's consciousness by doing spiritual practices by reading scriptures like the shrimad bhagavatam ramayan and mahabharat and bhagavad gita or the bible or the quran whichever tradition you belong to and by that one will know who you should be what your life should be like okay so if you read the ramayana you will know how to be like a ideal human being that is uh, lord ram himself because he is maryada purushottam if you read the ramayana you will know 
uh, so sorry the mahabharata you will know what dharma is yes that's what is the conversation and shrimad bhagavatam answers this question what is the greatest welfare activity for all yes in the sages of naimi sharanya headed by shonak rishi they asked this question to sut goswami and then sut goswami speaks what he heard from sukhdev goswami and sukhdev goswami speaks what he heard from his father vyasdev and vyasdev says what he heard i don't know from whom <laughs> Vyasdev says the conversation of Maitreya and Vidur. All right, that's what the Shrimad Bhagavatam is. It's a long cycle. I know it's very confusing, but that's how it is. All right. So there you go. So the next time you ask somebody that, sir, madam, you have given me this remedy, will it show results? So think of this video and know the facts. Okay. So. there you go if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like the video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is over enthusiastic for remedies okay which is perfectly fine there's nothing wrong in fact you should we should be over enthusiastic for remedies okay and yes if you want a consultation from me regarding your chart then you could always go down in the description section to book a reading where you will find the link to my website okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you must find him okay or else you find remedies bye bye